Hello again, welcome back. So we've been talking about cryptographic protocols and cryptographic algorithms. I want to talk about a system today called PGP, which puts all that stuff together in a very nice way. Right, so there are lots of different cryptographic algorithms out there, a bunch of different protocols. Uh, but how does the average Joe use these things? You know, you, do you have to be a cryptographic expert, uh, have a PhD in computer science to use these things? Well, it would be nice if you didn't. And a guy named Phil Zimmerman believed that to be the case, and he said, well, what I'm going to do is take a bunch of uh, high-powered cryptographic algorithms, the best that's out there, and package them together in a way that the average person can use them. For what application? Well, to encrypt uh, email traffic. Um, and so what he decided to do was to take the best algorithms, really strong cryptographic algorithms, and package them in a very nice way. Okay. One of his motivations was that uh, Zimmerman had a very strong distrust of the government. He was kind of a uh, libertarian, you might say. And, um, you know, the government doesn't really want you to be using the strong cryptographic algorithms. Or at least they believe that if you do use them, they should be able to decrypt your messages. Because they won't, don't want criminals uh, to be using strong cryptography to hide their activities. And uh, Zimmerman didn't really believe in that. And so he put together a system called PGP. And in fact, it got him in a lot of trouble. And he was almost went to jail about it. But, uh, but things worked out in the end. OK, uh, did he succeed in making a, a strong cryptographic stuff available to the public? Well, you can kind of judge for yourself. Here are a couple of quotes from Wikipedia um, that show that um, the cryptographic uh, algorithms that he was using were strong enough that the FBI, the Italian police, the United States government even had trouble decrypting these things. And so that's pretty strong evidence that uh, he did it right. Um, okay, so what was the idea? He developed this program called PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy, kind of a tongue-in-cheek reference uh, to a particular radio program. Uh, in the late 1980s and, and early 1990s, the characteristics of this was that it was to make the best available, to make the best available cryptographic algorithms uh, useful to the average person. Those were integrated into a general purpose system so that, you know, when you send email, you can invoke PGP and encrypt your email. Uh, all the package and the documentation, packaging and documentation are available freely online. And there is a commercial version available from Biocrypt. One might ask if there's, a, uh, if there's an online free version, why have a commercial version? Well, a lot of companies don't like to use freeware. They want uh, parties that are available that they can actually call on to give maintenance and that sort of stuff. And so some companies won't use freeware. Okay, fr uh, PGP has grown very explosively over the years. It's very widely known. Um, it's available free online, you know, worldwide for Windows, Unix, Macintosh, various other operating systems. It uses some of the most high quality cryptographic algorithms, uh, symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption, hash coding. Uh, it's widely available and packaged in a nice way so that the average person can use it. Uh, one of the things that's important for a lot of people is that it was not developed or controlled by any government and it's now on track to become an internet standard. Okay, so what have we said so far? Well, PGP illustrates, and we'll see in our next couple of lectures how it's used, but it illustrates that you can take these very strong cryptographic algorithms and make them available so that the average person can use them. Uh, PGP is very widely used and it's very secure. The algorithms are state of the art. Thank you.